Hey guys, it's Will Gadara. Okay, quick level set here. <laughs> this is insane. I mean, it's just full on insanity out there. <laughs> oh, the darkness, the heaviness, the uncertainty. Like all of you, I've been in the same place for, I don't know, what seems like years. And every morning I wake up and I grab my phone and I start reading bad news. I hate bad news, and yet somehow I've become obsessed with bad news. And here's the thing. For all of us in the restaurant business, you don't do this for a living unless you're an optimist. You do not choose to go into the restaurant business unless you're overwhelmingly optimistic. And yet, over the past few weeks, I've talked to so many peers and friends across the country who are having a really hard time finding things to be optimistic about. And so that's why we decided to put this together. Because here's the other thing about restaurant people. Listen, every industry is having a really hard time right now, but I think most people would agree that the restaurant business is just taking a licking. But during these adverse times, restaurant people stand up and fight. And I have been overwhelmed by the people across America and around the world in our industry who are stepping up and doing extraordinary things and in their own small way making the world a better place. And so every week, we're going to come here and we're going to share those stories. And we're going to do it because A, those people deserve to be affirmed and those stories need to be told. B, because as we've heard those stories, they've made us happy. They've inspired us. They've filled our gas tanks and we hope they fill yours too. And C, well, because honestly, we need something to do right now. So here we go. In a complete and utter rip-off of John Krasinski's Some Good News, welcome to Weekly Specials. It's the Weekly Specials. Do, 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 do. Weekly Specials. Good news coming at you. And now, for our first ever, we're going to go into this week's Deep Dive. Deep Dive. So as we know, the coronavirus pandemic has ravaged our industry. The shelter-in-place mandates have rightfully shuttered our restaurants, and in the process, millions of people are out of work, and thousands of restaurants' futures are now in doubt. And yet, something remarkable has happened. Restaurants have not stopped feeding people. Restaurants across America, whether a salad chain or a fine dining institution, have refused to take no for an answer and have figured out new ways to take care of their communities. In San Francisco, a grassroots organization called Frontline Foods mobilized almost immediately. The idea? Get donations from the public, give that money to struggling restaurants, and then use the restaurants to serve local hospital workers. Just a few weeks later, they've raised $700,000 for restaurants, served thousands of meals, and have expanded to 22 cities. In Kentucky, Chef Edward Lee started the Restaurant Workers Relief Program, which transforms restaurants across America into relief centers for unemployed workers. It's now in 16 cities, with more than 25,000 meals served. And in New York City, Rethink Food is working with 30 restaurants to transform them into food distribution kitchens with the goal of serving 24,000 meals a day. Fast casual chain Dig has handed out more than 75,000 free meals along the East Coast. In Harlem, Chef J.J. Johnson is serving thousands of rice bowls to nearby hospitals. New York caterers Nasser Jabber and Daniel Dorado started the Migrant Kitchen and are serving more than 1,000 meals a day. In Seattle, Chef Melissa Miranda has turned her popular Filipino restaurant into a community kitchen for people in need. The list goes on and on and on and on. All this underscores something essential about people who work in the restaurant industry. We are programmed to take care of people. We're programmed to provide hospitality. Our friend in Los Angeles, Chef Jessica Kozlo, put it perfectly when the shutdown began last month. She explained that this pandemic was so difficult because we have dedicated our lives to bringing people together, and we are now in a moment in which that needs to be at a minimum. Listen, it's clear 
this is not a time for our restaurants to be open, at least not in the traditional sense. But instead, this crisis has brought new meaning to hospitality, to the value of restaurants in our society. And it has shown how our people are programmed to serve others. By this time, you've probably seen all the numbers about how important our industry is to the country, how many people we employ, the percentage of the GDP we represent. But if you really want to know why restaurants are important, consider this. Through no instruction or mandate, the restaurant industry has kept our kitchens open through this. Not to make money, but just to serve and it will hand out more than a million free meals this week. That's what matters. And now, something just a little bit lighter. A little highlight we're gonna bring in every week that we like to call graceful quarantine and a reminder that even the people we're used to seeing on TV, they're out there and they're bored. Well, don't think they got nothing going on Cause there ain't nothing going on I don't think that they got something to do No player board too. <laughs> well, Will, thanks so much for that introduction. Hi, everybody. Neil Patrick Harris here. I'm uh, in isolation, sitting in my very symmetrically shot office here in uh, Long Island, New York. And uh, when Will Girara asked me to be a part of this program, I said, absolutely. You don't even have to tell me what the title is. I can, uh, I can carve out a tiny bit of my pretty busy day to uh, just sort of share my thoughts, um, what's happening in my life. And he sort of asked what I've been doing. And I have mostly been focusing on interests and hobbies. Uh, I like magic, as you can see. There's some uh, rabbits and hats up in this piece. And, oh, by the way, the one thing I did ask is that he just keep this a, a single unedited uh, video um, to not uh, do those quick cuts. So if you see a, a, a fast cut of some sort, it is really um, more that I'm prone to seizures. This is a cool one. Take this, a regular deck of cards, and if I just cut them and mix them up and put some on one side and some on the other, kind of like this, just make a big mess of a, of a pack, all right? So there's, a, well, there's some over there, and there's like some over there. If I give it one cut and I say the magic word, oopsie doodle poop, all the cards are back in order. Well, not in order, but the same direction. You're welcome, you're welcome. Fun facts about cards. Here's a, here's a little fun fact. Look at this. This is the eight of diamonds. How many eights do you see? How many eights? Well, most people would say the two here on the edge, but if you look, you multiply that by the number of cards in each suit, which is 13, you get 364. And if you add the joker, 365, which is the number of days in the year. Interesting fact about that. They call them court cards because they were, um, there was a little confusion when they were calling them leader or gallon cards uh, globally. So they went with uh, court cards. But I've mostly just been uh, hanging out here. And the, re the reason, the thing I really wanted to show you is what I have been working on, mostly spending my time, yes, playing cards, but I have been building a uh, house of cards. It's uh, something I've always worked hard at wanting to do, um, something that I've seen other people do, and it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of effort. I've spent a lot of time on mine. I'm actually using uh, my actual a card that's a Neil Patrick Harris playing card, kind of cool, NPH card. They look really neat. You can see the details in there are super awesome. I want to be really careful. Um, because this is mostly what I've been doing with my time. I'm gonna show it to you. Look at that. Look at that thing. This is probably, I've, this 
would probably take three weeks. No! No! And now, we're going to pass it over to our field correspondent, who also happens to be my wife, Christina Tozzi, who's going to share some tidbits that'll make you smile. Take it away. Tidbit, happy little tidbit, tidbit, happy little tidbit, tidbit, happy little tidbit, tidbit, that'll make you happy. Thanks, Will. Y'all, I just want to say, I have so many tidbits for you. Okay, first off, do you know about this dog, Sonny the Golden Retriever? Sonny lives in Colorado with his owner, Karen, and Sonny and Karen have lived next door to 71-year-old Renee Hellman for over a decade. Renee has chosen to self-quarantine, and so Karen and Sonny, being good neighbors, decided that Sonny is going to be in charge of delivering Renee's mail Sunny has even learned to deliver Renee her groceries. I mean, can you imagine this like warm, adorable, fluffy little pooch walking up to your door with groceries in its little jaws? I can't even. That is just the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Do you all know Irma's in Houston, Texas? You're going to love this. So this couple was dining out at Irma's, having a nice meal, when they learned that Almost all of the restaurants in the county that Irma's was in would have to close for who knows how long. And so this couple, by the way, had a meal for about 90 bucks, decided to leave a $9,400 tip, some cash, the rest credit. I mean, that takes tipping and generosity of spirit to like a whole nother level. I'm about to cry. In the UK, there's healthcare professionals, there's doctors, there's nurses, there's the entire support staff. Communities across the UK have been asking, what is it that we can give you beyond medical supplies? What can we bring you? What can we do for you? And you know what they said? Yo, we're hungry for cookies, cakes, and pies. I mean, first of all, duh. But second of all, so the communities across the UK have shown up. Over 2,500 people, and I'm talking home bakers, professional bakers, bakeries, donut shops, you name it. If there's cookies, cakes, or pies that someone can make and deliver, they're delivering them. So y'all know Ben Moore. He's a BBC News correspondent and London resident. He decided that, hey, you want to know what? I can't bring my kids out to restaurants and they're driving me a little crazy at home. So I'm going to just up my game a little bit when it comes to dinner. So the dinner table, the kids sit down, mom sits down, old Ben comes behind his son and says, sir, I'd like to present you with the March 2020 vintage of milk. Can you sense the grassy notes, the fieldy notes? What do you think that cow ate this season? Just because restaurants are closed outside doesn't mean you can't show that level of hospitality, that level of service. You could set up your own restaurant at home, y'all. Come on, raise the bar. You're gonna love this one. Familiar faces, maybe unfamiliar roles. Y'all know who JBJ is? Yeah, you do. John Bon Jovi. Jersey Pride, Jersey Strong. So he has two JBJ Soul Kitchen restaurants that are nonprofit community restaurants in New Jersey. They've raised enough money so far to provide 105,000 meals to their communities. But guess what? JBJ isn't just like the silent partner. Guess who's got his porter shirt on and doing the dishes every single night? JBJ. I don't know about you, but that was plenty of toasty tidbits to feed my soul. There's so much good in this world, despite what's going on. And I hope you just feel well fed. Back to you, Will. Thanks, Christina. See what's happening here? Nailed it. All right. Now we're going to go to Ben Leventhal for our weekly segment about our friend and arguably the patron saint of the hospitality industry. Jose Andres for This Week in Jose. Here comes the week in Jose. Everything is okay. Because it's a week in Jose. So we have this segment in the show because on top of everything else that we're talking about, there's one guy who by himself moves mountains, inspires the world, is... Day in and day out, a man whose work is just simply incredible, and we are awestruck by him and inspired by him. Um, here are some headlines. 
Chef Jose Andres delivers 4,000 meals to Aventura Hospital. Chef Jose Andres, World Central Kitchen, preparing to feed tens of thousands at Nats Park. This Jose Andres prayer candle sold out on Etsy in just five hours. Prayer candle. Jose Andres says doctors and nurses will eat at his restaurants for free when they reopen. Bay Area effort to help restaurants feed hospital workers partners with Jose Andres World Central Kitchen. This segment is not this decade in Jose or this year in Jose or this month in Jose. Those are headlines from this week in Jose. Let me tell you what the icing on the cake is. Let's click over to his Instagram where we see what has he been doing all week other than visiting sites seemingly around the world where he set up operations. He's posting cooking segments with his kids. All week he's doing this. Thank goodness in one he's in his PJs, which does make him human and does make him a little bit relatable. It's good to know that at least one day this week, just like me, he was not able to get out of his PJs. Um, Chef, we love you, thank you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Ben. Inspiring, as always. What a mensch. Anyway, that's all we got for today. Thank you all for giving me a reason to shave. And we'll see you next week, here at Weekly Specials. It's the Weekly Specials. Do, 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 do. Weekly Specials. Good news coming at you, the weekly special.